Hi, everybody. I just got another question from John in Wisconsin. And John asked, I just watched your video on evolution and natural selection. I was wondering, is there an alternative to understanding human nature and behavior other than through evolutionary theory? If so, what is it? It's a very good question, and I think it's one that um, is hard to answer. I think it's hard to answer because people are very invested in alternative explanations for um, human behavior and human nature. And I do think that there are some nuances that need to be considered when we're talking about human nature and um, human behavior. The simple answer is, on the whole, no. On the whole, the only other global frame of reference that we can use for understanding uh, human nature and human behavior would be to use a religious frame of reference. And while I have deep love and appreciation for religion, I don't think that um, religion has lent itself to um, providing the kind of answers um, that we would hope for. And creation stories in religion um, are best, in my opinion, if taken um, non-literally as a story about our coming into being. And in that sense, I think they could be retained, preserved, and quite useful. Otherwise, I think that thinking about humans as an organism um, and the mind as um, the organ that organizes our behavior um, and is the central hub of our nature um, is best done through the process of natural selection and sexual selection. And given some of the modern details to fill in the gaps of Darwinian natural selection and sexual selection, such as um, kin selection theory, um, parent-offspring conflict, and uh, reciprocal altruism and such. So I think that the best way I can um, compel someone to look at human nature and human behavior through the lens of um, evolutionary theory is to have them study evolutionary theory and then um, go back to clinical phenomena and try to understand clinical phenomena, or you could even say non-clinical phenomenon, um, having understood evolutionary um, psychology, evolutionary uh, anthropology, um, evolutionary developmental psychology, and related fields. You'll find that there is such deep and rich explanatory power coming from um, evolutionarily derived theories that it will actually dwarf um, other kinds of explanations. So I invite you to do that um, as I have done. And it doesn't mean we have to abandon some of the uh, other ways in which we understand people. It just means that this will become um, a foundational, a very important foundational way of understanding people. Now, there is something that I want to say here about culture, um, cultural processes. Now, cultural processes, of course, are not divorced from our biology. The kinds of cultures that we create, of course, are intricately related with what our natures, uh, what our nature actually is. That said, um, we do have the ability to create such complex cultures, um, and we do have this very high intellectual capacity and executive system that sometimes we can um, make choices and behave in ways that seem to um, defy uh, what is our um, otherwise mandated human nature. So culture doesn't serve a meta-theory um, function in psychology, in my opinion, but it is an important consideration, especially once you take into consideration executive systems um, and complex cognition and memory. Also, the transmission of culture is not a genetic transmission. Um, it is a relational transmission. And so I think that's very important to consider. Nevertheless, I think you'll find that if you go to evolutionary theory to try to understand human nature and human behavior, you're going to feel um, quite enlivened by it, um, and I think it'll help.